really important that we begin to change the mindset of young people to know that your vote counts. They don't understand that the legislative arm of government is actually a co-equal arm of government. We have an uh, incredible amount of potential. Whatever it is I was doing because of my personal DNA, it had to be of an international standard, which is what, seriously speaking, is all about. Hello there. It's Seriously Speaking again. It's time for us to conclude the series on the bold women, women who are bold enough to make a change. And it's my pleasure to be introducing to you somebody who is like my Aburo, my own younger sister. That's what they call a uh, younger sister in Yoruba land. And uh, she's someone who came into an industry that was already, I mean, full of big ones, big names. And then she came and changed the narrative, bold enough to do that and still make a difference and make a name. Her name is simply known in the fashion industry as LDA, but you'll find out all about how she took that bold step some 11 years ago now, if you stay tuned. We'll be back. Yes, when this young lady came into the fashion business some oh, more than 10 years ago, she created a new line, what I saw as vintage. People saw this was distant, this is lovely, but she started to work with Victorian laces and styles in Nigeria and Ankara, how much bolder can you get? It's my pleasure to welcome on set today, Lanry Da Silva Ajayi. I made her catwalk, because she didn't bring me a model. So she had to catwalk, that's it. Oh. Hello, Lanry. Oh. How are you? Fine, thank you. Now, Thanks this for is having a me. great, this is a great. You. Turn around, let me see, okay. Okay, okay, okay. And definitely, do you wear any other person's pieces? Very rarely. Very mm -hmm. rarely, but sometimes I do. Mm -hmm. But most times, I'm um, 90, almost 95 percent in my own pieces. Anyway, welcome, girl. So let's Thank sit down. You. And I, I find, you know, see your dress. The length, it's long. It covers up everywhere, but it's pretty. Did you set out to make clothes? Was it a deliberate decision to make clothes that had this kind of look? Um, the thing about it is this: um, I remember when I started in Nigeria. And I think for me, it was more my, my foundation whilst I was in England. Mm -hmm. And I, I fell in love with the Victorian era. And I sort of took to it. And when you look at the Victorian era, there's a way by which you use your lace trimmings and, you know, there's a way you put it together. It's almost like very classy. Mm -hmm. Not really feeling too much, but too sexy. Mm -hmm. And um, moving back home to Nigeria, sort of tried it out. And um, at the beginning, I thought... Did anybody okay, want you, though? Who? Enough people. People even said to me that, Larry, are you sure that this is what you want to go into? Are people going to appreciate it? I don't think Nigerians are ready for this. And I said, you know what, I'll take the gamble and see how it goes. And, you know, from 5 to 10 to 15, 20, and they don't better than word of mouth, you know, because people would look at it and be like, oh, where did you make your dress? We'll go to her. And I was, was very, very appreciative. And um, it was nice to know that people could embrace that at that time in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And to make it to be couture, I mean, because you would not think that well, it's not saying they're great designers, and you admit that because you describe Larry um, Diola Sego, Falake Koka as big sisters that you, you appreciated, Odio Mimone, big names. Correct. So those big names didn't scare you? Well, um, I remember that I spoke with um, Sister Odio then, and um, Falake actually was very sweet. I remember that I had this um, pop-up store where she had come, bought some pieces. And, really? Um, yeah, she did. Falake is good like that. And um, so she, th there was encouragement, and um, they, they could see my own sense of style, and you know, and they also sort of thought, oh, this is different, it's nice, and we got along. And um, the interesting part of it is that when you look at the fashion industry today, you see all of this everywhere. In fact, people tag me in some pieces and say this reminds us of LDA, which <laughs> I think was fantastic brand positioning, um, because I created my own niche, and I think that was what made me um, sort of be relevant mm -hmm, up until mm -hmm. now. So I think Niger Nigerians were, you, you could not be sure, people were not so confident as they are now today. About the Nigerian, I mean, Ooh, yes. who would use Ankara to make clothes? I made a, an outfit for someone. Yes. And um, on conclusion, How she, long she paid, this was about nine years ago, mm -hmm. and um, she paid me for the dress was for a wedding. You won't believe it that she didn't wear the dress at the wedding. And I remember that was a bit like, ah, why wouldn't she have worn the dress, you know? And this one, she said to me that oh, I was just a little bit scared that she didn't know how people was going, they were going to take it. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I, she, she felt bad and all. Oh. But today, she's one of my very good clients. So I think you have to believe in yourself. 
and my passion drove my creativity and believing in my own sense of style. So if I had a lot of clients like that, you can imagine I would probably have changed direction. Mm -hmm. So I think um, as individuals, we need to believe in exactly what we are doing because if you don't take a risk, you will never be able to form your own identity. Mm -hmm. And I think I formed my own brand image very quickly on, which is part of why I've been um, relevant in the industry till today. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's interesting when I even look at international designs, there are certain things I see and reminds me of things I did. But there are mm -hmm. people that call me and say so to there's me- So there's this one, what's the name of this brand that is doing a lot of vintage-like stuff of things I did at the beginning, internationally? Internationally. Mm -hmm. I know that people talk about Dolce & Gabbana, which is yeah, a very, yeah, 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 people yeah, talk yeah. about Dolce & Gabbana, because now, and then, you know, there's this old motif thing going on now, which, which I put did. put lace here and there. And I did so much of it that I think people got fed up. I mean, you couldn't have, <laughs> you couldn't have <laughs> an MDP piece without... that didn't have flowers, motifs. I did those things, like, and everyone knew me for that. Tell I me about your known. journey. Tell me about your journey to that. I mean, because you, you didn't study fashion originally. No, I didn't. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I actually studied um, business administration mm -hmm. and um, I did my master's in finance. So it had nothing to do with fashion. But my interest in dressmaking and clothing myself drove my passion. No, have you always made your... Okay, is this mommy's fault now? Yeah, mommy, mommy definitely. My mom... Um, I remember when we were growing up, she made us, you know, when you do home economics or all those things, she mm -hmm. made us do more than we had to do in school. So, in fact, I remember when I was young, I used to prefer to do school homework than house homework, because <laughs> she, she, would, she would be like, ah, they do it to make an anki, how about making a pair of shorts? And you're thinking, ah, it's not that deep. This is what we were meant to do. But you know, all of that sort of got us interested in making clothes and all. But being in England as well, you had free time in the evenings when you are done your studying and all. So there was an older woman, an Italian woman, in Coventry then that I used to go and sit with, and she taught me some little things about fashion and how to make clothes because I was one of those that if I buy a dress, mm -hmm. I wanted to change it into something else. And so if I couldn't afford the expensive ones, you know how it is, your, <laughs> your, your pocket money, student, <laughs> your student fees and all that. So I couldn't spend everything on one dress. So I had to find a way by which maybe buy something. Then you, you would buy from the stores that were in, 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 the, in Vogue, Vogue then, where um, Caramelan, there was Morgan, Jane Norman. Then before, then afterwards, we started get, giving bed to Mango, Zara, and all of that. Mm -hmm. And I was always in those stores. The so collection comes it. out, I'm there. I buy mm -hmm. a top, I change it around. By the time I wear, people are like, oh, Larry. But I remember the other day I had gone out in a, in a scarf. I tied it around myself and all that. And I got there and was like, Larry, your top is so beautiful. So, so, <laughs> I tied it around my body. And I made it something nice with a pair of mm -hmm. jeans. So I think I always had that sort of... Um, trying to, to believe in my own style. Mm -hmm. 